What's up my movers and shakers? I'm Dave, this is MS Paints, and this is Star Wars style blaster marks and laser burns. Now this is a direct patron request and the whole process in this video, I've never actually done any of it before. So unfortunately it's a lot of trial and error. The end result is, I would say it's pretty okay. The tank don't look great overall, but we live and learn. And I have chosen to do the separatist AAT tank, the droid army from Star Wars Legion. I don't have a droid army yet. I just have this tank. So if I f this up, it's totally okay. No dramas, no one ever has to see it again. I'm not going to go into too much detail because Sarastro's painting guide and Artis Opus have basically done this better than I could and it's my first time stippling so I will go back and do stippling and a tutorial on stippling if I find it useful for wargamers with a disability but for this tutorial I'm pretty much only going to focus on the blaster marks. And once I started this stippling process, I kind of thought, oh, it. I'm going to stipple pretty much everything. And I say pretty much everything, I mean absolutely everything. I dabbled with some darker colors, some grays to get a little bit of grime and grease in there. It didn't come out in the final thing too well, but that's okay. Now let's get on to the blaster marks themselves. These guys can be any shape that you want, so long as the central point is cleanish. That kind of seems to be the general thing with Star Wars blaster marks is there's a clean point where the ultra heated bolt actually goes and then there's a almost like a gunpowder discharge around the point. And you can use blue tack to do this, just to mark off the clean area you want. And it's a mixture of stippling and overbrushing that I'm trying to get this effect. And when I say you can pick any shape you want, I'm going to go for a standard sperm shape. And once the blue tack comes off, we're going to shade the edges back in a little bit to make the burns look more natural. Now you can take pretty much all of these techniques and try different variations and combinations to see what suits you. I didn't really do that and I tried one approach pretty much across the board. Inside the clean area, I'm going to use the colour that I would eventually dry brush in the tank in to represent the edges and the primer of the tank. And I'm going to add some metallic paint inside this to represent where the scorching is deepest. This is the natural colour of the tank underneath the paint. And pigment or weathering powder on the flat dry surface can be moved around. You can shunt it, shape it, and if you don't like it at all, just blow it off. Now you'll see I tried to do a non-destructive approach here and seal it with isopropyl. Uh, way too much liquid going on here and it has distorted it. However, you can, with pigment powders, just move it around again. Ultimately, I found dusting with matte varnish from about 30 to 40 centimeters away, locked it in without disturbing it with the pressure from the can. And of course, if you watched the last video, I'm making good use of the dry box that I did back then. And to kind of bring all these popping colors together on the tank, I'm gonna try these new enamel washes I got for Christmas, all AK Interactive. And the great thing about enamels is that you can pretty much try stuff if you don't like it, just take it off again with white spirit. Now 
engine grease seems to be the best suited for the colors and the effect I want to go for. And going with white spirit when you're done, pull the highlights back with a cotton bud. And everything's pretty fine. It turned out okay. Now one thing I consistently need to do is as someone that does his highlights early and then brings everything back down with usually enamels or inks, I need to make my pops come earlier. I need to make those highlights really stand out because the washes I use at the end tend to just kind of flatten it big time, not in a little way, in a big way. And I need to get around that, I think. So I did dry brush more after everything was done. I let it sit on the table for a few days and thought, yeah, I'll dry brush that up some more. And I used the cream again, and I used some extreme whites to bring out the popping edges. And you know, it looks like it's going to look pretty good on the table. I mean, I said I wasn't going to get a droid army. I probably will get a droid army. Roger, roger. So like I said, that was quite a short one. Uh, that was specifically a patron request. So I just wanted to give him something before he finished his droid army. And this is specifically what he wanted. In the next video, I do have the Grot Air Balloon coming up, which is just madness on a base. Madness on a base. And UK restrictions permitting, I've got a collaboration with Geek Gaming Scenic, so I also want to do something about Hero Quest, but potentially something about Hero Quest that hasn't been talked about before. Probably the most important information about Hero Quest you're going to need is how to f***ing buy Hero Quest in 2021. So I'm going to talk about that and what you need to look out for. But that's kind of it for this week um also i'm adopting a cat tomorrow so so thank you for watching thank you for supporting thank you for subscribing please do that and thank you to the patron who requested this cheers i'm out of here